This week, the Supreme Court began its new term featuring several high-profile cases. On Tuesday, the justices heard oral arguments for Merrill v. Milligan. The plaintiffs are arguing that Alabama's new congressional map dilutes the voting power of black residents. Here is Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman on the court who made her debut this week, talking about the case. It became clear to me that the framers themselves adopted uh, the Equal Protection Clause in a race-conscious way, that they were, in fact, trying to ensure that the freedmen um, in, during the Reconstruction period uh, were actually brought equal to everyone else in the society. Con conservative Justice Samuel Alito also weighed in. They're not going to win on whether the majority votes as a block, which may be due to ideology and not have anything to do with race. It may be that black voters and white voters prefer different candidates now because they have different ideas about what uh, the government should do. Quite an experience to be able to hear those oral arguments. I might as well just call this part of the show the Ariane <laughs> Vogue show, um, because clearly you're the expert at the table. So I'll just ask you, what are the most important cases coming out of the Supreme Court, especially as we think about everyday Americans' lives? Well, it was so interesting to hear her there, because, you know, usually when a justice starts on the court, you know, they want to show that they know what they're doing. But... And they ask a few questions. She actually dominated those <laughs> arguments there. That was what was interesting. She went on and on and on. And she knows she has these conservative colleagues. And you saw that clip there. What was interesting is she saw her conservative colleagues who believe in originalism, right? And she's making an originalism argument there. She's saying, don't talk to me about how thing, these maps have to be race neutral when, in fact, look at the 14th Amendment. They took race into consideration there. It was so fascinating to see her trying to take that away. So we do have these big cases coming. We've got this. Uh, we've already had that one, the uh, Section 2 case. And then there's another case that's infused with race, again, this term. And that has to do with affirmative action. In fact, there's two disputes. Court precedent says, remember, that um, you can take race race in consideration as a factor in admissions, but now a conservative group is coming to the court and saying, we don't want you to take race in, in it, you can't look at race at all, mm -hmm. otherwise you're violating the Constitution. So once again, this court is being asked to look at an overturned precedent as we saw last term. There's another interesting voting rights case, and it comes from supporters of Trump who want the court to adopt this obscure legal theory that basically says that state courts cannot play a role um, when they're looking at laws passed by state legislatures when it comes to federal elections. And what that would mean, critics feel, is that state legislatures could go rogue. They could pass whatever they wanted to, and the state courts couldn't stop them. And right now, most of the state legislatures are controlled by Republicans. So there's a real fear among uh, supporters of voting rights about where this case could go. Uh, there's also a really important LGBTQ case coming up. Again, pitting those rights, gay rights, against claims of religious liberty. That's going to be a hot-button topic. But it was so fascinating to see that Justice Jackson is going to take over this term that is so infused with race, handling these cases. And she started out there, she was at ease, she was confident, and she was super aggressive. And I was texting to someone, I call them her group chat, some of her friends that I've now sourced up. And they were they were saying, yeah, this is who we know. This is our friend. <laughs> She's going to speak up. Uh, Ariane, I want to ask you, because again, this is your part of the show, Supreme the Supreme Court term, it started with its lowest approval rating in modern history. How aware are the justices? of the perception of the court. How does that factor in at all to just their thinking about their jobs? Well, it's so interesting because over the summer, usually when a Supreme Court justice gives a speech over the summer, there's not a lot of meat there. This summer, we saw a squabble. We saw the liberals. Justice Elena Kagan saying, whoa, you know, a court can no longer be considered legitimate, right, if you're doing things like overturning precedent and, and not fully explaining why, or if you're straying from your commitment to a certain judicial philosophy. That's a problem. And she kept saying, I'm not talking about any cases or controversies directly. But of course, she was, because that's what she said all along. And then you had uh, Chief Justice John Roberts come forward and say, whoa, whoa. You can't talk about the legitimacy of the court just because you don't like the opinions that are coming out. And Justice Alito, who you saw there, 
he also jumped in. They know that the legitimacy of the court is so important. They never want to be looked at as another political branch for the simple reason is that they want, when they issue opinions, they want the public to follow them and not think, oh, this is just politics. We'll wait for another politicians to get on the bench. They're very concerned about it. They know about this approval rating, but I'm not sure they know how to, how to conquer it. it. Yeah. Right. Um, and one last question here. It's We have about a minute left. President Trump, he's gone to the Supreme Court to, to, to ask them to basically revoke the DOJ from having access to these classified documents that were seized from his home. What's the latest there, and what, is, what kind of politics are going on there? Well, that's so interesting, right? So there, Trump draws the Supreme Court. It's starting a new term. It's starting trying to be afresh. It's drawn into this white, hot um, fight. Actually, it's a narrow dispute because the, Trump isn't, isn't looking for relief that would deal with the criminal justice probe that's going on. He was clear. He, he's not asking for relief there. What he's asking for is that that special master cannot uh, get get the chance to see um, about a hundred of those documents that were seized that were marked classified. That's the issue before the court. It's kind of technical. Did the lower court do things right? But again, you know, we've seen another document um, uh, case around documents last term, and Trump lost badly there, except for uh, Justice Clarence Thomas, who ruled in his favor. So now, it doesn't feel like that they're going to get, they're going to give him relief. They'll probably deny it. But at the same time, they're being dragged in, the, the political spotlight's on them, the term's beginning, and this will probably be resolved sometime next week. It's just where they don't want to be. It's not where they want to be, but it's exactly where they found themselves. So we're going to have to continue to watch that. Thank you for coming on and breaking all that down.